Real estate agents all over the country and really the world are using chat GPT for so many different things. I want to kind of dive into that today in, in this video and also share with you uh, where I feel like there might be some opportunity moving forward and just a different way to think about AI and everything that's happening in the world. I had the pleasure last week of flying uh, around with um, Kevin, meet Kevin, and we went to look at eight different houses in Redding, um, which is in Northern California. And then we came back to Santa Monica where I was there in the room when he interviewed Brett from ARC uh, Invest, Kathy Wood's uh, investment you know, portfolio group. And they had a really interesting conversation around AI, chat GPT, among several other things. Um, but it was very interesting to hear his take. This guy is incredibly uh, an intellectual. This guy is really smart. And basically what he said was that you, the way that you got to think about it is that, you know, chat GPT, you know, the, the model that they have right now is kind of like iPhone one, you know, that came out whenever it came out 14 years ago or more. And basically, they're going the, the 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 speed that this is growing, um, and the technology is is expanding. Is basically going to be, you know, it took 14, 15 years, whatever it was, to get from iPhone one to, to the model that they have now. It's literally going to take them just a couple of years to really advance just as fast with Chat GPT. Also, you hear a lot about Chat GPT. Um, competing with Google and and how Bing and um, you know these other search engine companies, uh, Microsoft, uh, well that's Bing, are, are going out there and you know now they have a competition on their hands. Um, so you know, it's it's going to be really really cool to kind of sit back and watch all of this unfold, um, how it happens, and how we can use this in our businesses um, and our lives to make things easier. You know, the advancements in technology for real estate agents has been really interesting. You know, when you go back to the early 90s, before MLS was even a thing, it wasn't even invented at that point. Real estate agents literally were looking in manuals. Uh, they were looking in uh, magazines that, uh, that the local agents advertised in. And that's how they found the listings to sell to their buyers. That's how they found what was for sale on the market was these magazines. And I remember when I started in 2002, I, I don't know what year MLS came out. Um, I don't remember the exact year because it was after I got in the business. I don't know if it was like 96, 97, 99. I don't know when it was exactly, but I know it was very new because my broker, uh, my first broker at the time was telling me how they had to look in these manuals uh, to find properties and how amazing this MLS thing was. And I was lucky enough to be born into the business with MLS already in place. So I didn't necessarily appreciate the power of MLS the way that the agents before me did. I do have a new appreciation of MLS because now I'm in other markets. I'm in South Africa, I'm in Brazil, I'm in India and other markets that do not have MLS. And now that I know how these other countries operate, it was like when I went to Brazil to do the keynote speech at R4, the REMAX convention, the National REMAX convention of Brazil. I went there um, not knowing that they didn't have MLS, not understanding how they operated their real estate businesses. And to know that they go out and the seller will literally hire, you know, five, 10, 15 listing agents. And the first one that brings a buyer wins. There's no MLS. There's no syndication. It blew my mind. It, I, <laughs> when, when they started to tell me, it was like, I was just, I felt like I was in a different world, like a twilight zone or something. I was just like, how in the world do you guys operate? And then I had to wrap my mind around how they operated. And, and, and you know, I, at that point I realized, okay, listen, you know, I, you know, regardless of what the situation was, if I was a real estate agent in Brazil, I would go out and crush it because I would understand the networking aspect. See here, there's not a lot of networking necessarily between agents as much as these other countries, because you can just put the, 
uh, listing on MLS, another agent finds the buyer. You just basically sit back or spend your time getting more listings while somebody else goes and does the work to sell it and you get half the money. Um, I would, I, you know, it would be a different model, but I would crush it because I would understand the networking aspect. I would build a relationship with agents and make sure that I had the network of agents. So I would kind of create my own MLS, if you will, where I could send out listings to agents that I know would kind of honor, you know, um, yeah, whatever. Like I would figure it out. But it made me really appreciate MLS. And, then, and and I believe and so MLS came along and made our lives 10 times easier. Then you've got um, Zillow. You know, Zillow that came along and, you know, <laughs> it kind of scared agents. Oh, Zillow is going to take the industry over and agents are going to go away and all this stuff. But it actually made our lives easier. I'll give you one example. And that is that when buyers used to come to me before Zillow, I used to have to go out and find the properties on MLS based on their criteria, send them a list, let them go through the list and tell me which ones they liked. I normally had to take the ones they liked and try to find more properties that they might like. And it was a whole back and forth, you know, cycle that I had to go through to narrow down what properties they actually wanted to see. It took a lot of work. It was a lot of work. It was literally what I did full time. Uh, you know, there for a brief moment in my career when I was working with a lot of buyers. Um, but now, or you know, when, when Zillow came along, then all, all that I had to do, I didn't have to do anything. They already knew what properties they wanted to see. They would send me a list. That's what happens in today's market. The buyer already knows, has a list of everything they want to see. They just send you the list. I don't, I've, I haven't had to look up properties for a buyer based on criteria in years because of Zillow. So thank you, Zillow, for making my life easier and creating a situation where um, I can sell more properties in less time. It, it, you, Zillow, made things so much easier for me and more efficient um, to be able to spend more time on getting more listings, less time on looking up properties for buyers. Um, thank you, MLS, for giving me more time to go after more listings and, uh, you know, creating a situation where, you know, I just basically, you know, spend my time working with sellers so that I have a large inventory of properties for sale that is exclusive to me. I don't have to worry about anybody going around me. They're going to go through me because they've signed an exclusive listing agreement. This is amazing, guys. I just want to bring all this up. And so chat GPT, just to bring this full circle is is just another tool that in my opinion is just going to make our lives a million times easier um in, in terms of everything that it does and what it's going to be able to do in the future who knows i don't know how far this thing is going to go it's it's just going to be fun to sit back and watch this unfold and how you guys utilize chat gpt if you're using chat gpt or any kind of AI in your business, uh, throw it in the comments and let me know exactly what you're using it for, how you're using it, and how well it's doing. Um, there was an article here by Jimmy over at uh, Enman. So shout out to Jimmy. Good guy. He had this article about 23 ways um, realtors are using ChatGPT. All right. And so social media, give me 10 Instagram posts for a realtor in your city. Give me 10 Facebook posts for a realtor in your city. 10 TikTok ideas, 10 LinkedIn articles, right? This thing is writing entire articles. Give me 10 video content ideas. Give me 10 blog post ideas for realtors in your area, right? And th this right here was a big one. Um, I actually tried this today. Write an MLS description for your new listing. Put the address. So I tried that. I put an address in there and let it write a description. And I'll tell you what, <laughs> it was good. It was a good. Uh, it was a good description. I was like, wow, that's incredible. Uh, look at this one. Rewrite an MLS description for your existing listing. So one that's already on the market that you want to rewrite, write a Facebook post. So I tried that one as well. 
I did uh, write an MLS description and then I said, okay, let me see, write a Facebook post. So it was kind of similar, but it was way shorter. It's like it knows that the formatting for Facebook versus um, MLS description is different. Right, create a create a TikTok video script for your new listing or existing listing. Write an email for my database promoting listing script video promoting. Okay, um, general real estate marketing. Okay, write a video script for for a topic. Five reasons people love living in your area. Um, shorten the video script to an Instagram reel, TikTok, or YouTube short. All right. Uh, write a, a script for a blog post or video. Top five restaurants for date night in your market. So there's a lot of things here. Give me 20 ways to creatively market myself as a real as a realtor. So yeah, I went on ChatGPT and I haven't um, necessarily used it for anything, but I went there today and just mess around with it to write MLS descriptions and write blog posts and, and Facebook, um, posts and stuff like that. And I gotta say, yeah, I was pretty impressed with it. Um, and, and I can see where it would make my life 10 times easier, uh, to have this tool. Um, this is amazing because, you know, as you guys know, who, uh, you, those of you who list properties all the time, how much time it takes to actually write these descriptions. So it, it, th this is a, a, a time-saving tool, okay? MLS was a time-saving tool for us. Zillow, time-saving tool. ChatGPT, time-saving tool. So this is, this is the thesis that I've been talking about for a long, long, long time, that as we see the advancements in technology continue to improve, we're also going to see our lives as real estate agents continue to improve and put ourselves in a place where we can sell more property in less time. I don't think this is going to decrease. I think this is going to increase. I think we're going to be able to continue. I think as technology continues to improve, we will, if the technology, you know, some agents aren't taking advantage of this stuff. It's just like Red X. People aren't taking advantage of being able to get any property owner you want's data for nearly nothing, for a penny, and then using that data however you want to. Calling them, emailing them, Facebooking them, running ads to them, right? Nobody's really using that uh, on, on a large scale. I mean, you know, the, the whole entire, the entire uh, you know, premise of lead gen is to collect data, to then communicate with, to possibly convert, and remarket to forever. That's the process. Data collection, conversation, conversion, remarket, same. No matter what lead gen activity you want to do, what you're scared to do, what you want to do, what how much it costs, whatever, it's all it's it all leads down the same road. And people aren't using like if you can collect data for a penny for any property owner you want, then why aren't you using that? Uh, against however you want to communicate, however you want to convert, however you want to remarket. Um, a lot of people, well, I mean, with Zillow, people just tell you. <laughs> Your buyers tell you what they want to see based on what they found on Zillow, um, which is, again, if you were born into this market, you don't understand what it was like to have to really work hard and put in a lot of man hours to find properties for buyers that you don't have to put in anymore. You don't, you don't necessarily appreciate it. Just like I, when I got into the business, didn't appreciate MLS to the level that the agents before me did. And so it's just the cycle and the next generation of agents and every generation that we have, you know, they aren't going to appreciate what it used to be like. Um, and most of them won't take full advantage of the technology that's sitting right there in their hands. So, um, you know, this, this is just another time-saving tool for us that's going to help us create more efficiency. Now, where do I see a huge opportunity? Okay. This is, this is what I'm, this is what I'm thinking with this. Okay. Just follow me here through my thought process and let me know your thoughts. But with AI doing a lot of this work, writing these blogs, so on and so forth, 
And the more and more agents and other business owners and people in general uh, begin to use this AI, um, I think that there's going to be a, a huge opportunity and a window there for people to go in and and use, you know, because they, they say AI is going to knock out a lot of marketing jobs and a lot of the creatives out there. And I believe that. But I also believe that on the back end of your your career as a real estate agent to go out there and actually communicate with the buyers and sellers to represent them on their purchases to help make the transaction smooth as can be. As you are creating emails, let's just say, um, you know, my strategy, the weekly email, as you're creating emails and marketing materials for your business, I believe there's going to be a really big opportunity to, to be creative. I think that there's going to be a massive opportunity for agents that are creative, maybe use chat GPT to get to a certain place and then take it a little further with your creativity other than just posting or taking exactly what AI is telling you and then using that in your marketing or using that in whatever sector of your business that you're using it in. I think that if you actually take that as maybe a draft of what you want to do and then take it a take a step further to add your spin on it, your creativeness, your uniqueness, your originality. I think that's where a massive opportunity with this is. And I think this will help you actually become more creative, more original. Because it's like you have somebody, let's just say chat GPT is a person. <laughs> let's just say they're a person. And basically think of them as a person that you're there to bounce ideas off of. You know how you, you, you need people around you to bounce ideas off of to, you know, to really get to the next level. You can't really just sit in your own box, in your own mind and go to the moon, right? You have to bring people in. Um, and, you know, creative people and bounce ideas off of um, to really get that different perspective. And those different perspectives open up your mind to be more creative. And so think of ChatGPT as someone that is outside of yourself that you have to bounce ideas off of to get a different perspective to then help you become more creative on your end. So that's my thoughts. Again, let me know what you think in the comments with this and uh, oh, so and we'll see right. you guys on the next video look i35 with the top down quit to tell a hater they should get like me seem like